Hello, everybody. I was so glad to hear from Karen that um, they were getting a lot of feedback this year that you wanted to hear about exercise again, because um, it's just so important for those of you who have a Fontan circulation, and there are many benefits. Um, and hopefully, by the end of today, I will have inspired you to try and incorporate exercise into your everyday routine, because really, it's just such an important investment in your future. So we know that people born with congenital heart disease have an increased risk of being overweight and being inactive. And there's many reasons for that. I mean, a lot of you would have been told from early on in your life that it's unsafe for you to exercise. Um, and, you know, being a, a heart kid is incredibly stressful and a lot of you um, would have been wrapped in cotton wool by your parents and missed out on doing a lot of sport at school. And that really affects how you see yourself and you, you sort of grow up thinking that you're not good at sport and you don't enjoy doing things that you think that you're not good at. Um, and some of you might just uh, be too sick to really, and you weren't able to participate in things and, and um, it's a whole lot of hard work. But doing regular exercise has you know, many important health benefits, even in the setting of a normal circulation. It can improve your blood pressure, it helps to keep your weight down. Um, which is super important for Fontan people. It reduces rates of stress, anxiety and depression and it can make you feel much better about yourself and, and reduce symptoms of breathlessness. And we know in people with a Fontan heart through our Australian research that um, you know, doing exercise training for a Fontan person can improve your exercise capacity. It helps your muscles to work better and that helps your heart to function better. And that's um, a picture of someone, one of my um, training people's t-shirt that they wore to the gym during their training. Um, so obesity puts a lot of weight around your chest and it makes it harder for your lungs to expand and suck blood in, which is really important for heart function in a Fontan person. And we know that more active people have a less chance of being admitted to hospital. And that's not just because the fitter people are healthier and, um, and have a better heart, actually, Habitual exercise has been shown to be, have more impact on your exercise capacity than actually how strong your heart muscle is. So it's something that you can do. It's, you know, alluding to that same thing that Eve said before, what can you do um, for your Fontan? It's something you can do for your Fontan to keep yourself as well for as long as possible. And what's so special, now I'm really crap at IT stuff, but I've tried to make this little thing to show you. So when... Um, your, your organs and your muscles suck oxygen out of the blood and then that blue blood in a normal circulation returns to the right side of the heart over here and then is pumped up into the lungs and then the lungs when they expand and contract they squeeze the blood back to the left side of the heart and then the left side of the heart pumps blood all around the body. Now, of course, most of you will understand that in a Fontan circulation, you only have one pumping chamber. So that blue blood that's got no oxygen in it needs to get all the way back up to the lungs without a pumping chamber to push it up into it. And now we understand that actually the pumping action of your leg muscles are really important in helping to squeeze the blood back up to the heart. And for reasons that we don't really understand well yet, but we're looking into that with our research at the moment, for reasons that we don't understand, that the muscles in Fontan people are a bit scrawny. And so it's really important, you know, if you, if, that you work on your muscle strength and your muscle health by doing regular exercise because it improves the blood flow around your body. And that re reduction in blood flow is one of the major limiting factors as to why you can't um, exercise for as long and as hard as, as your friends with a normal two ventricle heart. And so what are the risks? They're far less than the benefits if it's done properly and safely. And it's really important that each of you goes and talks to your specialist about what is safe for you, um, because all of you are just so different. So of course you can sprain and tear muscles if you're um, not exercising properly. It's important, especially with the warmer months coming, that you maintain hydration and don't get yourself dehydrated, because people with a Fontan circulation are a bit more prone to getting low blood pressure when they're um, a bit dry. Doing exercise can precipitate abnormal heart rhythm, so we'll often want to do an exercise test and just make sure that you're not getting a high arrhythmia burden before you start doing a lot of exercise in the community. And some types of exercise can cause abnormal, uh, abnormally low or high blood pressure and um, if you're 
pushing too hard with the exercises. So, <clears throat> as I said, first of all, go and talk to your specialist. And some specialists aren't all that great at exercise prescription. And if you know, don't be afraid to go and get a second opinion if, if you need to, if you're finding it hard to get enough guidance from your cardiologist. And a tiny little bit of exercise is heaps better than doing nothing at all. So, you know, research has shown that even five or ten minutes a day of exercise can help improve your fitness level. And remember that day-to-day -day activity is really important. Um, just, you know, going up the stairs or walking to the bus stop um, or just parking that little bit further away, working those things into your daily routine. Um, and so start with attainable, modest goals. It's really disheartening if you've said to yourself, I am going to do one hour of exercise every day and then you only get 10 minutes done and you just feel really disillusioned and discouraged. So just sort of set some modest goals initially and choose something that you like. Don't go out and buy an expensive gym, mem gym membership if you hate going to the gym. You know, if you just like walking, that's fine. Or maybe you like to do some team sports. And with kids especially, especially under about 12, they just, you know, set training sessions just aren't very effective. It's much better to play games or, you know, jo join up to a local team and try and, um, you know, choose things that you think that your child's going to like doing. And there's also all those, um, you know, whiz-bang things now. They don't, not called video games anymore. I know I'm out of touch. But, and heaps of my patients like Fitbits. Um, so you can get, uh, you know, Fitbits and you can set, set little targets so you'll get a little thumbs up and an alarm when you've done a certain number of steps and a lot of people find that really motivating. And try to avoid sudden bursts, sort of slowly build up your fitness and building up the, the time and the difficulty, you know, gradually over a number of weeks. And so um, the, the type of exercise, um, we're still trying to understand what the right balance is, but you, you should try and incorporate some cardio exercises, and I'll explain to you what that is in a minute, and some resistance exercise. It's important to avoid big breath holds. So if you're, um, when you are straining or doing a lift, and if you sort of go, <coughs> you're, you, you can faint, you can, so it's important that you breathe through your exercises. So if you're, if you're straining and you're rock climbing, for example, or lifting weight, that you, make sure to be breathing throughout that strain phase of an exercise. And in general, we suggest that most of you have little shunts and it increases the risk of having decompression sickness. So scuba diving in general is out. Make sure you always check that with your cardiologist. Um, so cardio and resistance exercise are quite different things. So rapid, fast muscle contractions are, are cardio exercises and they, they induce more of an endurance kind of fitness in your body, whereas resistance exercises, um, such as um, strength training, build the muscle bulk. But all exercise has a little bit of resistance. Even walking will be, um, has a little bit of resistance because you're having to hold yourself up. So um, don't, you don't have to be thinking about doing, you know, um, lifting heavy weights and things at the gym if you want to be building some, some muscle strength. And so this is just a a chart to sort of describe some of those exercises. So traditionally, people with a Fontan heart were recommended that they could only do these kind of low levels of activities like bowling and, and golf. <laughs> However, you know, since I gave this talk last year, the guidelines have changed and they're now, it now says that, you know, as long as the person's been assessed properly, that doing these higher level activities are, are safe in the Fontan circulation. And that was based upon our Australian research. So, um, and most of the time, you know, these kind of moderate level activities are, are, use, are really helpful for, for building fitness. Um, so what level of exertion should you aim for? In general, a good training level is something where you're puffed out, but you could still finish a sentence talking to the person next to you. So just being guided by your level of exertion. If you want to get a bit more scientific about it, um, you can use a heart rate monitor or your Fitbit. And in general, so first of all, we need to determine what your peak heart rate is at an exercise test. Those silly formulas that you see at the gym, like 220 minus heart rate or, or minus age, are just useless in people with a Fontan circulation. So we need to determine your peak heart rate at an exercise test. And then if, if we're a little bit more worried about you, sometimes we'll suggest you just train at 50% of peak heart rate. But in general, most of the time, um, most of my Fontan patients, I'd suggest training up to 75% of their peak heart rate. Um, and in terms of how hard should you train with resistance exercises, 
trying to, if you can do about 10 to 15 repetitions in a set, that's a good level of moderate intensity resistance. So a repetition, these are repetitions, so you should be able to push 10 to 15 repetitions in about one and a half minutes. And then as that starts to be easier and you get stronger, then you can build the resistance up, up a little bit. And sometimes if we're <coughs> worried about someone and they're especially frail, sometimes we'll get them in and train them initially in hospital in our cardiac rehab unit. And there are some special situations that we get a little bit more worried about. Um, if you've got severe dilation of your aorta, the main blood vessel coming out of your heart, or severe heart pumping or valve problems, in general, we'd be more recommending the low levels of exertion. Um, if you're on warfarin or one of the newer, newer blood thinners like um, rivaroxaban, you need to avoid contact sports because if you get a big blow to the head or the body, you can have important bleeding. And as I said before, if you're getting a lot of arrhythmia, we need to sort that out before you start doing a lot of exercise. And if you've got a cardiac device in, again, we don't like contact sports very much because your device or the um, wire can get broken. Long distance swimming can cause lead fracture, so we don't like that all that much. And we need to just make sure that your device is set properly so that it doesn't get confused when your heart rate goes up during exercise. So, um, in conclusion, all of you um, can benefit from regular exercise and I really encourage you to try and work it into your lifestyle and especially for parents, try and get those habits started early because it's just so much easier when you create those habits in childhood rather than sort of trying to change things when you're older. Um, but each of you will have different training goals and, and you know, we need to work together you know, with your doctor to figure out where those training goals should be. <coughs> and and so, you know, I get emailed lots of questions. If ever you've got any questions or you, know, you can always email me. I sometimes won't be able to give you really specific advice without knowing your history, but you can contact me anytime.